Hi, folks. You know, I'm sure by now most of us are aware that Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has an uncanny knack for cringe inducement. Hi, folks. Yes, it's true. On January 11th, Massachusetts's favorite non-American Indian Senator Liz Warren took to Twitter to celebrate the 75th anniversary of FDR's demon child called the Second Bill of Rights. And in so doing, left many of us who actually understand the origin and meaning of the word rights wondering whether Wonder Bread Woman actually understands what this means and whether or not she actually has a clue about the fact that his second Bill of Rights was based mostly on the Communist Manifesto. A second Bill of Rights, under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all. And she didn't bother to mention what she thinks is the meaning of rights. And perhaps we can remind her what the meaning of rights actually is, because it comes from Old English and Old Germanic from the medieval period, and it comes from right-handedness, the idea of what was proper back then. They thought right-handedness was proper, and to treat your neighbor properly was to be mutually hands-off. Well, it turns out that FDR didn't really like that idea. In fact, FDR's staff had many members on it who were big fans of Joseph Stalin, as Amity Schles has mentioned in her terrific book called The Forgotten Man. So given that, we were treated to the screech, nasally voice of FDR telling us all about his Marxist-based Second American Bill of Rights. The first plank of which was the, quote, the right to a useful and remunerative job. Which implies that a worker has a right to the government forcing consumers to actually support him, regardless of how good or bad he is, or whether the consumer might prefer to send his money elsewhere for something. And when you go with Marx's idea that the state will decide what is useful, it destroys the price mechanism and the ability to steer resources where people actually want them. Okay, so that's plank one. How about plank two? Well, that is the right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing and recreation. <laughs> What's adequate? Who defines what is adequate? And of course, who has to provide it? Now, we'll leave those questions hanging, Liz. Perhaps you can get back to us. Third, there is the right of every farmer a decent living. Again, according to whom and paid by whom? Well, FDR put that poisonous idea into action in the 1930s by subsidizing farms, creating a politically needy welfare cadre that was dependent on him and his political pals for tax cash, and which led to the nightmarish agri-corporation welfare system that we still have today. Well, what about the fourth plank? Maybe that's a little better. No, I don't think so. The right of every family to a decent home. Well, whose home would that be? Could you just walk into somebody's home, Lizzie? How about walk into FDR's home? Oh, maybe not. Maybe what they mean is the redistribution of wealth to give to people to buy homes or government pressures on banks to hand out loans to people who shouldn't get home loans or the creation of government corporations to subsidize loans at below market rates, all of which led to financial assets related to home mortgages have lost value during the housing decline. And the banks holding these assets have restricted credit. As a result, our entire economy is in danger. Yeah, you got it. The economic crash that kept going between 2008 and 2012. Ching! Winning idea there, Liz. Thank you so much. But what about the next one? How about the fifth one? Oh, that one is the right to adequate medical care. <laughs> Socialized medicine, which is working so well in England that the NHS in England is way in the red. They're holding people back from getting needed surgeries and they are hiding a lot of that information from people by telling each other not to release it. Huh, that's interesting. How about the sixth plank? Well, the sixth plank is the right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age. Oh, so maybe they could come up with a really cool unconstitutional idea, like some sort of social security Ponzi scheme. Yeah, that'd be a really good idea. And then we can have generational enslavement. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, FDR. That's awesome. Hmm, what could the next few be? Sickness, accident, and unemployment. 
All, of course, are Marxist ideology and have seen all sorts of money taken from people's paychecks for various political reasons and made it very difficult to actually allow people to provide for their own problems if they run into them. Yeah, okay. And finally, the tenth one. The wonderful one, the right to a good education. Ah, yes, yes. That is something that Marx spoke about a great deal. The government should be in charge of education. And not only should the government be in charge of education, according to Marx, the government should force children to work. <laughs> yeah, so by the way, if you have any kids who are in school and they can't graduate until they do some sort of community service, yeah, you can thank Karl Marx for that one. It's forced charity. Oh, those don't go together? That's right. You know, the whole thing about this is the difference between force and choice. And of course, the Constitution leans more towards allowing for more choice, but many people in politics don't like that. So rather than amending the Constitution, they propose all these ideas, and then they just pass laws. It would be nice instead if maybe Liz Warren would take a look at her supposed rule book, the Constitution, or maybe even go a little bit farther than that and understand economics and the very concept of rights itself. Because rights are not positive, they're negative. You don't have a right to something, you have a right to be left alone. And Liz, please leave us alone. Thanks. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to tell your friends about us. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.